والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to this special episode of Ask Hudam, your host, Fuad Muhammad. And of course, we first of all welcome our dear and beloved doctor, Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, doctor. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khayyan Fuad. Barakallah fiqh. We are also privileged to be joined by two well-known personalities, one from all the way from the east, from India, Dr. Zakir Naik. Assalamu alaikum, doctor, and welcome to Ask Huda. It's my pleasure to be here. And also we have one of our most beloved from the West, from the United States of America, our very own Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Salaam alaikum. alaikum wa rahmatullah. Okay, we would like to take your questions from the very beginning of the episode. Just a quick reminder of our telephone numbers, 00-202-385-55248 or 249. Or you can send us an email at ask, that's ask at huda.com. TV. Dr. Muhammad, if we can start with you, with uh, Brother Abdullah from Qatar, he asked, after the iqama, he hears people saying haqqan wa sidqan, and he wants to know if this is from the sunnah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah wa kafa, wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhin asfafa, la siyama al-mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, wa tasliman kathira. We'll praise you to Allah alone, we praise him and we seek his help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us whenever we hear the mu'adhin, the caller uh, to the prayer, that it is highly recommended to repeat after him. إِذَا سَمِعْتُمُ الْمُؤَذِّنَ فَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَقُولُ So if the mu'adhin says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, it is recommended to repeat by saying Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Until he comes to Hayya ala al-Salah and Hayya ala al-Falah, it is recommended to say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no mighty, no power but with Allah. Then it is recommended after finishing the Adhan to make a supplication. Very beautiful supplications have been narrated by the Prophet mm-hmm. in this regard, such as Allahumma rabba hadhi da'wati tamah wa salati al-qa'ima ati muhammadan al-wasilata wal-fadila wa ba'athu maqaman mahmudan al-ladhi wa'adta. And we discussed the meaning of that repeatedly before. Now with regards to the iqama, which is the second adhan, the minor adhan, in order to establish the congregational prayer. Uh, it is also recommended to repeat after the mu'addin while he's calling the iqama, but there is no such supplication after the iqama that is called haqqan wa suqqan. These are some Arabic, well, innovations. You know, mm-hmm. every nation they have their own innovations. Uh, the word haqqan wa suqqan means a very beautiful meaning. It means for sure, which is qad qamat al-salah, qad qamat al-salah, the salah have been established. Um, it is, it is a good statement, but it has not prescribed. As uh, in the last episode, Sheikh Yusuf and I would discuss the danger of innovation. Even if it sounds good, as long as it has not been prescribed by the Prophet Wasallam, <laughs> nor do we find it in the Sharia, then we should not say it. We have brother Abu Ridwan from India. Assalamu alaikum brother. You're live on Ask Huda. Your questions, please. Wa alaikum as-salam, Sheikh Salah, and you welcome back to the Ask Huda. Jazakumullah khairan, thank you. And guess what, we're having Dr. Zakir Naik today. Alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullah. I have two very in brief questions. Okay. Yes, uh, I want to ask uh, one, in our India there is a regular practice uh, after uh, Salat al-Jumma. Uh, they are saying a special salam to our Prophet. Is it innovation or uh, is it prescribed uh, somewhere? Oh. Okay, your second question? You know, uh, you, you should, should I, uh, I, I tell you, you today what kind of salam it is? Okay. You, you don't have to tell us because we already have the reference here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no. no as you know, that is a, what kind of salam they are doing and it's like, 
Ya Nabi salam alayka, Ya Rasul salam alayka. Okay. They make all uh, this, uh, so I want to ask if it's okay. Okay, okay. and your second, second question? question is, uh, my, my second question is regarding the soul, you know. Some people they say that after dying the soul, it comes back to some other person. And he, if, if, if it is not, if it is murdered or if it is uh, killed or like this, so mm-hmm. it is the soul comes back and then the soul he takes the revenge or something. So this kind of innovation there are, so I want to get it here, please. Okay, okay. Right. Zafar Khair, Brother Abu Redwan there from India. Um, Dr. Zakir, we have a question here from a Christian brother. He says, I would like to know what you have in Islam that is different from us Christians. Uh, as far as Islam is concerned, is people have a misconception that Islam is the new religion which came into existence 14 years back. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the founder of the religion of Islam. In fact, Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on the earth. Yes. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes. is not the founder, but he is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So in Islam, we have to believe in all the messengers that have to be believed uh, by the Christians, right from Adam, uh, Moses, uh, Noah, Abraham, Jesus, peace be upon them all. But what we say that we also believe in another last and final messenger that is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So yes. we tell them we have to believe in additional messenger. Last and final, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was even prescribed in the Bible. If you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I have many things to say unto you. But he cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that year shall he speak. He shall glorify me. So here, Prophet Jesus says that he had many things that he wanted to tell to his followers. Yes. But he knew that they could not grasp them now. So he says there's another messenger to come, and his name is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he will tell you and guide you to all truth. So we believe that whatever Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, we believe he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was born miraculously. We believe that he was the Messiah. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those <laughs> born blind lepers with God's permission. But we do not believe that he's Almighty God, which yes. many of the Christians, they yes. consider that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he is God and he claimed divinity. Okay. In fact, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or why he worship me. So the major difference is we don't consider Jesus to be God, but we consider him to be one of the mightiest messengers of God. Jazakallah khair. Sheikh Yusuf, we have a question here as well from a Christian sister. She says, um, I want to become a Muslim, but I fear losing my children. What can I do? Can I accept Islam in secret? Ooh, uh, we get this question more often than you might imagine. It happened last week, as a matter of fact, that a lady wanted to come to Islam in our chat room on chatislam.com. I sneak my commercials right in there <laughs> while I'm talking. But anyway, uh, she asked this, a similar question. What we told her was that, okay, first and foremost, it has to start in your heart. And if your heart is convinced and you know there's only one God, you want to serve him on the same uh, level, you know, like the Prophet Jesus, Prophet Moses, as Dr. Zachar was mentioning, then you have to commit yourself. But as far as saying it out loud and going uh, to the extent that you would lose your children, lose your home and be in the streets, what I would like to recommend, if at all possible, to be in contact personally with someone who can advise her and know her circumstances. Because this is a TV show. Yes. Or that was a website. And this is not the best way to get personal questions answered. And I really hope that she will find somebody, or uh, this is a lady, huh? Yes. Uh, uh, I hope she will find somebody she can talk to, a sister or an imam, somebody who could know her situation and say, okay, in your case, you need to do this or this or this, and we're here with you to support you. Because when you get into Islam, you need support. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Um, doctor, we have Sister Yasmin from Egypt, and she says... Um, how did uh, the mother of Musa salam, receive Wahi revelation? Well, we find um, in uh, chapter Al Qasas, it's called the stories. It's chapter number 28, verse number 7. Allah the Almighty stated exactly. This is the, the, the verse. 
uh, and the chapter which stated that uh, Moses' mother received some sort of wahi. But the word wahi is a very broad word, has uh, a broad meaning. Uh, it does not necessarily mean wahi or a revelation in a sense that Allah spoke to her, nor does it necessarily mean that Allah has sent angel Gabriel to her, because whenever there is a wahi from Allah directly to, the, uh, to a person, then this person is a prophet. Or through angel Gabriel, then this person must be a prophet, whether a prophet or a messenger, and we dis uh, distinguish between both of them uh, before. But in this condition, which is, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِي Allah neither did speak to her, nor did he send an angel to tell her what to do. But there was an instinct into her that Allah inspired her to do the following. To suckle her son, Musa alayhi salam, until if she fears for him, she fears what? If she fears that the Pharaoh and his soldiers are looking for any newborn in order to uh, slain him, then فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمْ Throw him in the river, uh, obviously in, in, in a box. Uh, I want you to imagine a loving, caring mother who is afraid that somebody might kill or hurt her son. In order to secure her son, she would throw him in the river? That doesn't make any sense. And that's why they needed some sort of support, divine support through inspiration. And that's why we find another hadith that supports this meaning of, of wahi, which is inspiration. The sound hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said, In the Ruh al Qudusi, Nafasa fi Ru'i. Ruh al Qudus here is referring to Angel Gabriel, peace be upon him. Nafasa fi Ru'i. He inspired into me. He did not communicate with him directly, rather, it was some sort of wahi by what we call it ilham. You know, when sometimes uh, you're at the traffic light and you don't know the direction whether shall you make right or left, then all of a sudden you have the innocent, you make right. This is, uh, and you say, Alhamdulillah, I made the right decision, otherwise there was a problem, uh, have I made left? This is some sort of ilham, guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that like intuition? Intuition or uh, inspiration? It is. It is inspiration. Inspired into her to do this, but not through an angel, nor through direct communication. Huh. Because the direct communication or through angel Gabriel, peace Your be upon him, it will be wahi, and that's only to the prophets. But the lit, uh, the, the, it, it does not mean the literal meaning, rather the metaphorical meaning, which is uh, the inspiration. Ah. Okay, Zakhla Khair, Dr. Muhammad. We have Sister Um Habiba from the UAE. Salaamu Alaikum, Sister. You're live and ask all your questions, please. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullahi wa Assalamu Alaikum to all of you all. Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi That's a very comprehensive salam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what happened last Sunday when I was watching for the TV? I saw your sister and I saw Muhammad Salah. And I love all of you all so much. I said, why are you not calling Dr. Zakir Naik? Allahu Akbar. When I saw, I said, Allah, listen to my dua. This is some I'm sort of tuition yeah. or <laughs> inspiration. <laughs> Make dua for our new TV channel. <laughs> and, believe, and believe me, Huda TV also is um, part of my dua only. SubhanAllah. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, uh, anyway, I want to tell Dr. Zakir Naik that uh, in India, uh, he should pro propagand more about, uh, you know, that there's too much bidah and too much uh, worship of uh, Qabr. Mm. You know, to spot spot you will see people going to Qabr. He must make more on this part also. Too much bidah is going on. People don't know the truth of Islam. Believe me. And uh, one more thing is that uh, the uh, ladies are uh, the ones who are instigating more in these things. Ladies are the ones. I'm, I'm being a lady admitting the truth that we ladies are the cause of uh, these things. So I, I want you all to educate the ladies because they're more of uh, influence to the family. Okay. Uh, secondly, I want uh, Dr. Zakir Naik and Mr. Stead to take Muhammad Salah to India. Oh. <laughs> 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 and take the TV also to India, inshallah. 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 I'm very happy to see all of you all together. Barat Allah Fik, sister, Habiba. Meet in and, and for Amin. some reason, Amin. sister, Amin. we were just talking about it right before the program. Right, Dr. Zakir? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> we also Amin. have Sister Wafa from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, sister. You're live and ask other questions, please. Assalamu alaikum. 
commanded to enjoy good and forbid evil, each one according to his ability. But sometimes the one fears of giving advice to the others, as he might fall in the same prohibited act which he warned against it earlier. Mm. My question is, um, shouldn't we stop um, to uh, um, saying to the others this is right and this is wrong until we achieve ourselves all the right things and uh, abstain from all the bad for not being under the warning of Allah, as He says, "Kabra maktan in Allahi and taqulu ma la taqalun." That's my question. Look at that, come Allah. What is that? Mashallah, organized, wasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> Get right to it, Mashallah. We also have Sister Mahira from Egypt. Salam alaikum, Sister. You live and ask other questions, please. Um, Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Um, I want to ask is about. Um, is it Salah Wajib? I'm new to the thing, so um, somebody said that it's compulsory to pray mm-hmm. um, Salah Wajib. And also about the um, wiping over the socks. So is it, does it have to be leather socks or okay. can it be cotton socks? Got it. So, um, okay, khair. We also have Sister Sabah from Canada. Salam alaikum, Sister. You're live and ask uh, your questions, please. Assalamu alaikum to all of you brothers. Uh, it's a really blessed and a very happy day to see all three scholars over there, all three my favorite. But today I didn't call for a question. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Sheikh uh, Yusuf Estes and Brother Muhammad Salah for the answer he gave me in the last episode. Jazakum Allah khairan. Uh, and I would like to ask Dr. Zakir Naik if he can have a school exactly like his in India. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I agree with the lady before who said, take Muhammad Salah to India. It will be a really great honor for all of us. Okay. Inshallah. And perhaps get married in India as well. <laughs> <laughs> sure, everybody will be happy. My whole family, I'm sure, would be very happy to see Sheikh Salah because I have really said everybody knows him very well. Zakum Allah khairan. Thank you so much. I'm afraid we're not going to answer questions. Okay. The, we have Um Hamza as well from Egypt. Salaamu alaikum, sister. You're live on Ask Kuda. Go ahead. Hello, Salaamu alaikum. Wa alaikum, sister. I've got two questions for you all today. Um, okay. Alhamdulillah, I reverted to Islam and I'm married to a Muslim. But I'm the only one in my family back in the UK who's um, reverted. And when I talk to other people, like strangers, about Islam, I can talk about it no problem. But when it comes to talking to my family, I get really nervous, and I don't really say what I want to say. Okay. And afterwards, I think, I wish I said this, or I wish I said that. And I'm really worried that I'm not conveying the message to them, to them very well, and that I'm going to be held accountable for this. Okay. And I know that scholars say the best down you can give is by example, and that when they see a new you, a better you, they'll see Islam. But the trouble is that before in Islam, uh, before Islam, sorry, I was... In their eyes, I think I was quite a good daughter. You know, I didn't smoke or do drugs, and I was always good with them. But now they see me kind of rebellious because I don't do birthdays, I don't do Christmas. And I feel that they might hate Islam because of the changes that they see in me. So I wonder if you could advise me about that, please, and um, okay. also make du'a for me to make it easy for me to give them da'wah and also for them to revert to Islam, inshallah. Allah make yeah. it easy for you. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. And also, I've got the second question is that um, when the Prophet Sallallahu referred yes. to a person who takes care of the orphan and him being together in paradise, like two fingers that he put together, mm-hmm. um, what does he mean by an orphan? I mean, is this any child that you find in an orphanage, like an abandoned child who's mm-hmm. still got parents but just been left? Mm-hmm. Or do we have to really check the background of the child for the person who okay. wishes to have this reward? Okay. Um, I'd also just like to ask if I can take Sheikh Bahamid's number, please, because my husband would like to ask him something specific in Arabic about Cairo, if possible. Okay, we'll ask the brothers in the control to give you those number. Uh, Sister Um Hamza, Hamza there from Egypt. Why don't we take care of her question, Sheikh Yusuf? She says that since uh, she's accepted Islam, she finds it very easy to talk to strangers about Islam, but her family, she has that problem. Because when she don't go to birthdays, for example, they see her as being rebellious. And she wants to... If, if the, being an example is enough to give that with her family? Well, first of all, Um Hamza, I have to tell you 
that I know exactly how you feel because I've been through that myself. And the first couple of years in Islam, I actually tried to debate with my family and I did a lot of destruction through trying to copy some things I'd seen on TV and things I'd heard. And uh, until I sat with good scholars who explained to me, this is not the way you treat your family. And doing a debate in front of people like Dr. Zucker does, this is great, <laughs> but you don't do this with your father. And as soon as I stopped this debating business with him, which was only a few weeks after coming to Islam, he entered Islam. What with my mother, I just because she was the expert on religion in our family, and boy, we went to it tooth and nail. And she, at the first day, she accepted what I said because it was based on some strong principles she taught me. But then the next day, after reflection, she came back. She said, "Don't you ever talk to me about religion again." One time, I recall that before my mother passed, that they asked her hospice care was taking care of her. You know, a lady asked her, "Is there anything bothering you?" She meant, do you need anything? You know? mm -hmm. My mother said, yeah, there's one thing. My son became a Muslim. <laughs> so I think the thing to do is exactly what you said. Take it easy, be the example, but do not compromise Islam. Whatever you do, do not compromise Islam. You will never please the people by displeasing Allah. And if, if you keep everything focused on trying to do your best in Islam and giving them the service, then if Allah wants me to be guided, they will be guided. But get up in the night, final point on this, get up in the night and really cry to Allah in your prayers in the camel layo. I've found this to work for every single subject I ever had a problem with, even as recent as last night. You stand and you cry to Allah and He solves your problems. That's my advice. Okay, we have Brother Abdul Ra'u from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Brother. You live and ask other questions, please. Brother Abdul Rauf, are you with us? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, go ahead, brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, brother Fawad, I do not have any uh, question for the Sheikh today. I'm glad to see Dr. Zakir Naik live on Huda TV. Uh, it's a pleasure for all of us. We have Sheikh Yusuf and Dr. Salah with uh, Dr. Zakir Naik together. Uh, my question basically is regarding we have various ibadat in Kashmir uh, that do not have any Islamic reference whatsoever. And uh, just now one sister was calling and that in India there are a lot of bid'as which have been uh, continuing since long, long time. And the most of them are in Kashmir basically. Okay. And Dr. Zagir Naik might be aware of those ibadahs. We uh, read out loud, we make azkar out loud, going to shrines and all those things have still kept on going. I request Dr. Salah and Sheikh Yusuf Estes also to consider visiting Kashmir sometimes in future and... Uh, spend a week or something like that so that these uh, bidas could go forever inshallah inshallah okay inshallah that's brother Abdul Rauf. some invitation for you uh, Sheikh Yusuf Estes alhamdulillah <laughs> okay Dr. Zakir we have another question here that says my non-Muslim relative believes that Muslim women are oppressed how can I respond to them uh, as far as the question you realized today uh, that the media is portraying a picture that the women are oppressed in Islam and I've given the talk on Women's rights in Islam. Yes. And I've divided into various different headings the rights of women, the spiritual rights, uh, economic rights, uh, educational rights, legal rights, uh, political rights. And I've proved in each and every case that, alhamdulillah, uh, Islam is the only religion which actually uplifts the woman and gives her due rights. Allah if you go back to the old ages, at the time of Babylonian, if you remember, that in the Babylonian civilization, if a man murdered a woman, Instead of the man being punished, his wife was put to death. Hmm. If you know the Greek civilization, it was supposed to be a great civilization, women were used for sex and pleasure. And yeah. there was a woman by the name of uh, Pandora, who was the cause of all the evil in society. Same with the Roman civilization, women were used for sex and pleasure. If you know the Egyptian civilization, before Islam was revealed, women was considered as a sign of a devil. Oh. Same in the Arab civilization, before Islam came, most often, when a female was born, she was buried alive. After Islam came, alhamdulillah, and I said in the lecture, that Islam and Prophet Muhammad is the first person who was the major benefactor for the upliftment of the woman. And if you realize that the rights that women have in Islam is the maximum, that is the reason today, if we analyze, out of those people accepting Islam, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, 
Two third of the people accepting Islam are women. Mm -hmm. Whether it be in the Western world, in America, whether it be in Europe, whether it be in India, out of those accepting Islam, two third are women. So my basic mm -hmm. question is that if Islam degrades the women, why are the Westerners, why are the Western women is, uh, accepting Islam? Why are the Indian women accepting Islam? For more detail, if she has any particular question, I can give a talk for a few hours <laughs> only on the women in Islam. I don't know where to start. But it is the media which is portraying a negative picture about the women. And it is our duty to remove the misconception. And I have a talk on that, uh, women in Islam, even the book is there. So if you go to that book, all the details are given on each and every aspect. Okay, Jazakallah Khair. Um, we also have a question here from Uthman from Nigeria, uh, Dr. Muhammad. He says that there were four men in a car accident. Three of them died, and the fourth one who, was, who survived was the driver. Does he, has to, does he have to fast on behalf of the three who died? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, in, in Surah An-Nisa, in verse number uh, 92, chapter An-Nisa is the fourth uh, chapter in the Quran, Allah the Almighty says, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ أَنْ يَقْتُلَ مُؤْمِنًا إِلَّا خَطَأً It is not befitting, nor is it permissible for a believer to kill another believer, unless if it is an accident killing. So in the case of uh, the accident murder, there is also uh, compensation, compensation for the mistake and compensation for the family uh, who lost their Indeed. beloved one. So the compensation for the mistake is a kafara, such as a freeing a slave neck. Uh, and if the person is not capable financially during slavery, of course, then it will be uh, moved to another uh, alternative, which is fasting for two consecutive months, فَصِيَامُ شَهْرَيْنِ مُتَتَابِعَيْنِ تَوْبَةً مِنَ اللَّهِ And obviously, since uh, nowadays uh, there is no slavery, then uh, the kafara will be fasting for two consecutive months. Uh, somebody would say such a very harsh compensation, and, but this is in order to make the person aware of every move he or she will do, even if it is, uh, leading to an accident killing. You have to be aware of that. Playing a part in taking the life of any person, even by accident, is, is a big thing. The second form of compensation is to the family who lost their beloved ones, which will be the blood money or the diya, which is equivalent to uh, 100 camels. The price will vary from a place to another, from an era to another. But now we have to determine who is responsible, because... In the accident killing, the murderer have some role that he played or due to his negligence or, or, or that he is responsible somehow. He did not really mean to kill, but his negligence led to the murder of somebody else, an innocent soul. So if the driver made sure that his car is running fine, brakes are okay, and he's driving in his lane, and he didn't do anything that is uh, uh, out loud, he did not speed up, then everybody died because somebody else bumped into them and they had a car collision. Then he's not responsible at all. Rather, he will be compensated as well by the other driver. But if the person knew that he was speeding, over speeding for instance, uh, or while it was raining that he was supposed to slow down, put the hazard light on. These are very important things. We say that traffic laws are Islamic laws as well because they regulate things in order to keep peace and to protect lives. So if he was not at fault at all, then he's not blameworthy. He's not required to fast, no, ne neither give uh, blood money or the dia. And if the other person, the other driver, uh, who hit them, for instance, was uh, responsible due to his negligence, then he's liable and he's responsible. What if the other driver died? Or what if the driver himself who killed some people in the car died himself along with them and it was his fault? then the blood money will be the responsibility of al-aqila. And this is a very interesting system that does not exist in any religion but in Islam. We say as the family members, the heirs, in case that a wealthy person dies, what happens? His wealth will be distributed amongst his heirs, right? What if this person is in debt? What if this person is responsible to compensate for a big thing that he did? Then his family members who are supposed to inherit from him in case that he died and left wealth, are responsible for settling that blood money as well. Wallahu alam. This is a Sheikh. We'll take a short break here on Askudan. We'll be back right after this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The deeds are bound by its intentions. The deeds that we do. We have to have a sincere intentions 
that we're doing it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the best definitions of things, the right vision, the criteria in which we would get to know what is right and what is wrong through the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet The tafsir of the Qur'an is to explain, is to interpret the best words, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but later on they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result, it's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Ask Kuda. Quick reminder of our telephone numbers 00 248 or 249. Or you can send us an email at ask, that's ask at huda.tv. Sheikh Yusuf, uh, let's look at Sister Wafa's question. She said, um, the, we, are in, we were commanded to enjoy what is good and forbid what is evil. And then there's another ayah in the Quran which she quoted as well that says that. Uh, that verily it's a big thing that you say something which you do not do. So, yeah, so do you wait until that you're perfect before you enjoy what is good and forbid what is evil? Yeah, we don't want to take either one of these verses out of context. The first thing and foremost is Muslims are always working on themselves. You hear people talk about the jihad on your nafs thing. Uh, yes, we are, we are working on ourselves and we're talking about others too to understand what is the truth of Islam and calling to that and forbidding the things which take people away from the beauties of Islam. Uh, it, if we wait till we're perfect, though, it's not going to happen because human beings are not perfect. We're not angels. But what we do, even I had the one who brought me to Islam, he was with us today earlier, and I remember what he said. He said, I'm telling you things that maybe I don't even do them myself, <laughs> but this is what Islam is teaching. We do our best and don't look to the Muslims to know Islam. Look to the teachings of Islam. Okay. Okay. Jazakallah khair. We have Sister Taqweem from Oman. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. You're live and ask your questions, please. Alaikum assalam. Yeah. Uh, I'm Islam. I'm Islam. I'm Islam. I just want to say uh, or talk to Dr. Naik. Okay. Uh, by the way, all, all of you are my favorites, in particular Dr. Uh, Sheikh Yusuf uh, Estes also. I, I really don't have words to praise uh, Mr. Uh, Sheikh Yusuf. Really, his program. I, I watch this TV regularly. Yeah, it is. Uh, I belong to India basically. I'm <laughs> from Hyderabad, okay. Andhra Pradesh. Okay. So just my, uh, it's not a question actually. I want to say something to Dr. Zakir Nai. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I want him to start uh, some kind of uh, like IIS. It is there in Mumbai. So I want him, if possible, to start such school in Hyderabad also. So that we can, uh, people like us also can be benefited <laughs> from that. I have seen that really it is marvelous teaching in his school. I just don't have words to praise him in any way. Uh, Alhamdulillah, really he is a gifted, blessed person and his memory, everything, Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khair yeah, to all of you and I, I really respect uh, Mr. Salah also, uh, his, his um, 
his way of uh, expressing the word he is so humble really <laughs> one can't believe him to be so knowledgeable and also so humble real i want to pray all of you we don't have words and i have seen here uh, one thing that many sisters are ringing uh, really you people are uh, benefiting us in many ways as such i am a working woman but still i don't leave any time to just uh, watch the tv whenever possible i i work for 7 to 8 hours a day i am out i have very young children but my wish is my children should study in a school like uh, iis Okay. So this is uh, my Bar- sincere request to Dr. Zakir Naik. Thank, Thank you very much. Barakallah Bar- feek inshallah. We have brother Ayman as well from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum brother. You live in Askoda. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam Ayman. Please, I want to ask two questions please. Okay. Uh, I want to know the uh, translation of this ayah. Wal mu'minuna wal mu'minat ba'dhum awliya ba'd ya'muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhawna 'anil munkar wa yuqimuna as-salata wa yu'tuna az-zakata wa yuti'una dawa rasul ulaika sarhum wa da'u wa anna da'ira hakim. The, my second question is I want to know is it I can open the Quran uh, uh, during the prayer or not thank you very much okay okay jazakallah mm-hmm. khair brother ayman you uh, dr zakir naik you wish to comment on sister taqweem's uh, question here's uh, here's an opportunity to tell her your uh, plans about the schools she said you have a school in mumbai and she would like to have one like this in hyderabad yes. alhamdulillah about uh, nine years back uh, we launched a project that uh, i've got two views Uh, mm. I call myself an extremist. <laughs> <laughs> One extremist is that I want to reach the full world and convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the reason we launched our Peace TV more than four years back. And alhamdulillah, the viewership is more than 100 million now. Allah mm. Allah. That's one extreme. Mm-hmm. And the other extreme of mine is that to take a few children and to train them in such a way that they become the future duats. Yeah. Take few only. My plan was only a couple of hundred, but it's increased now, alhamdulillah. So in that project, we launched a school in Bombay. Mm, about nine years back, that is Islamic International School, and we launched another branch in Chennai. Uh, that's about six, seven years back. Okay. Alhamdulillah. And that school, uh, from the age of three, we uh, train the child in English and Arabic. And Mashallah. from nursery, because we know that we don't Arabic as a language. Yes. Because the parent didn't think it was important. So, Mashallah, by the time our children reach uh, fifth or sixth standard, they can translate the Quran directly. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. And by the time they reach on average about four standards, they pick a half of the Quran. Allah. And every child, when he reaches, by six standards, he has to be a black belt in martial arts. Mm-hmm. Then yeah. there is the uh, swimming is compulsory, then mm-hmm. computers. And we are affiliated with the uh, Cambridge University. Okay. That's uh, IGCSE. So once they pass the 10th standard, 12th standard, or A levels and O levels, alhamdulillah, they get the degree from UK. So Mashallah. it's acceptable throughout the world. At the same time, we give them knowledge of Quran, Hadith, Sharia, Fiqh. And out of about 12 periods in a day, two periods of extracurricular activities, martial arts, swimming, computers, etc. And the balance 10 periods, five, five are in English, five in Arabic. Mashallah. So we have the Hadith in Arabic, we have the Seed of Quran in Arabic to Arabic. It's unlike the other school, it is an uh, amalgamation of both. Okay. And in this way, Mashallah, we have been quite successful. And now we train our students also, Mashallah, right from the age of four, uh, how do public speaking? So every... Uh, four months, mashallah, we have, stu- we have our students who are performing in large audiences. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Now, recently we have launched a project, inshallah, if Allah wills, that just a month, last month, uh, uh, I was in Dubai, and we are thinking of launching a company to, to uh, start such school throughout the world. Mashallah. Because to start a school, it takes too much of time, money, energy, everything. So we have decided, that, inshallah, if Allah wills, that in the next few years, we plan to start such school in different parts of the world. So if Allah is inshallah, even Hyderabad will be on the list, inshallah. Allah make it easy for Allah. Easy boy. We need to copy him. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> we have Sister Um Fatima from the UAE. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. You're live on Askuda. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To take you to Pastor Sheikh Muhammad Salah and to Dr. Zakir Naik. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead. Very definitely. Yeah. First of all, I would like to thank the entire Huda TV for making our dream come true of bringing together Dr. Mohammed, uh, Zakir Naik and Sheikh Mohammed Salah. These are the two most important people that influence our lives today. Thank you so much for coming together. Alhamdulillah. Giving us this opportunity, wonderful opportunity to uh, witness this uh, wonderful occasion. Alhamdulillah. And uh, uh, without uh, wasting time, I just would like to 
I would uh, request him to throw some light on this uh, Darga Sharif, which is being practiced in India, and the entire process. Because some people say that they go there with the intention of uh, Shafa. Some say, you know, we are just going for visiting. That there's lots mm -hmm. of things they uh, try to, you know, um, uh, excuse for that. So mm -hmm. I just would like you to throw uh, the light on that. That's all. Thank you okay. so much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sister Raihana, assalamu alaikum sister. You live in Asakura. Assalamu wabarakatuh. I wanted to uh, ask a question and some request with Dr. Zakir Naik. What I wanted to tell actually one sister has already told before me that uh, we need a uh, school in Hyderabad as well as in India everywhere. And mm -hmm. I want to, to tell Dr. Zakir Naik one small request is uh, if he can provide a hostel also, because if we parents are staying here, if there is a hostel, we can leave our children there, you know. And uh, one more question is that can our g girls uh, stay in hostel or not without a mehram? My uh, another uh, question is uh, why don't uh, my request actually why don't Dr. Zakir and I come to Damam, you know? Uh, because he frequently visits Riyadh and Jeddah and everywhere, but uh, here, unfortunately, we are missing him badly. His lectures in his Indian Embassy School here, if he comes and gives lectures, he will be very good for us. Inshallah. And uh, I am very thankful to all Sheikh and especially Sheikh Yusuf Estes when he is doing so, many, so much after he has been diverted. But, mashallah, it is a shame for us all that we should also work hard like him and do this. So pray for us that we should also do dawa like Dr. Zakir Naik and this Sheikh, inshallah, so that Allah will be pleased with us, inshallah. Just pray for us and answer my questions. Jazakallah khair. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Sister Rayhana, we also have a call from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, sister. You're live in Askuda. Brother Fasih. Brother Fasih. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Zakir Naik and Sheikh Yusuf, how are you both? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, well, I don't have a question really, but I just have a request to Dr. Zakir Naik. Um, if you could take Dr. Salat with you to India for the next Islamic conference. Inshallah. Inshallah. It will be very nice to have Dr. Salat also over Salaam there. Inshallah. We'll have him soon, Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah, my vote too. Too. I think that's a good Jazakallah. idea. Oh, yeah, oh, exactly. Exactly. I think okay. you're having a lot of requests here on the show, uh, Dr. Zakir. Inshallah. Okay. Um, Allah help me fulfill all of them. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. Um, we have this the question from uh, Sister Mahira from Egypt, and she says, uh, "Wiping the socks. Uh, some people say you only can wipe leather socks." Uh, no, basically, we stated a couple of sound hadith before. Uh, one of them was basically narrated by Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, in which he said that the Prophet sallallahu allowed us to wipe over the socks uh, the period of uh, one day and night the time of 24 hours that begins from the time of starting to wipe over the socks not from the moment that you put them on whether the shoes the socks are thick or thin as long as it is not a see-through like uh, lingerie or uh, um, uh, some sort of fashion it's not basically socks you can see the the color of the skin then this is the kind of socks which you don't wipe on because they're not called socks any pair of socks which are known as socks it is permissible to wipe on them providing you keep your wudu or tahara before you put them on if you're resident you have 24 hours from the moment you make wudu and you wipe over the socks with that it is possible to pray more than five daily prayers so because some people say you have five daily prayers not necessarily true because Sheikh Yusuf if you wipe over the socks Right now, you put your socks on in the morning and you kept your wudu all the way until Aisha for instance. Then when you came to renew your wudu, you wiped over the socks. This is the time which you start counting 24 hours. So you can pray Aisha along with uh, another uh, five, pray, uh, five uh, prayers of the morrow for instance. So what counts is 24 hours from the moment you start wiping on any socks. And... And when 24 hours lapses, it doesn't mean that it expired. Exactly. It goes it until expire. you lose the wudu after that. That is true. That's I heard why, you say that. Yeah, that's <laughs> why it's possible to pray more than five that's daily right. prayers with that. That's right. And if you're traveling, you have the, the time of 72 hours, of course. Mm. Wallahu alam. Okay, we have a caller from Malaysia. Brother Hamza, salamu alaikum. You're live on Ask Your questions, please. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, I, I wish to put this question to the panel. Uh, especially Dr. Zaki. Dr. Zaki, uh, you are very involved in this dakwah activity. 
I'm referring specifically to the splitting of the moon incident. Mm. Okay, from what I understand, the splitting of the moon was done for that was purpose, for no other reason. Splitting of the moon. Uh, sure. Okay. So, so this is what I, I would like to suggest to Dr. Zaki and also to Sheikh Yusuf and uh, the whole of Fuda TV. We need to, Muslims need to, well, send a unmanned mission to, to the moon. We have the resources. Only thing, the, maybe the yes, we have the you know the. He's SP, very ambitious. Only thing is, <laughs> he can go. Yeah. Yeah. he likes to travel. <laughs> Okay, okay, Brother Hamza, I think we got it, we got the, the point there. Jazakallah khair, Brother Hamza there from Malaysia. We also have Sister Asya from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Sister, you're live on Ask Khudair. Questions, please. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi barakatuhu. Wa alaikum, assalamu alaikum, barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah, today is a great day. Allah has brought great scholars of our ummah on one show. I wish and pray for this day. We hearty welcome Brother Dr. Zakir Nahi. I wish and request Dr. Zakir Nai to please invite Sheikh Muhammad Salah Inshallah. in next peace conference. Inshallah. My family and I are great fan of Peace and Huda TV. Inshallah. May Allah bless this Amen. channel. Two questions. Two questions for Dr. Zakir Nai. Okay. Why why people of Mumbai cannot get peace channel? Is it blocked by cable operator or government? What is the solution? Question number two, uh, my, my, uh, I wish you open your school in Jeddah. I am a KG teacher working since 20 years and I wish to work in Islamic schools like yours. Jazakallah khair. Okay. Dr. Okay. Zakir, we'll take her question right away. She says, why can't they get Peace TV in uh, Mumbai? Uh, the, the, I find the Peace Channel is seen uh, since in India, uh, the way the people get the channel is unlike the way we get in Egypt and in the, in the Gulf country through a dish. Mm. In India, we get through a cable network. Mm. So, and as there are many channels coming, about five, six hundred channels coming on the air, wow. and the cable operators have a choice of about 80 channels to mm. be shown. So they have a right to select what they want to select. And then they select, and basically they select those channels which pay them money, mm. basically. So most of the channels that are shown are those channels which are paying money. So then depends upon the demand of the viewers that when they give a demand to the cable operator, then you have more chance that the cable operator will put. So depending upon how uh, active the people are. What I feel, alhamdulillah, in most part of India, Peace TV is watched, alhamdulillah. There are some times where uh, uh, there are occasions where some of the people who may not like or may not agree with the content of the channel, some Muslims who belong to a different school of thought, mm. and they may lodge a complaint to the cable operator, and then again, you may put it off for a few days, and again it comes on. So this does go on and off. But alhamdulillah, as a whole, if you see that, mashallah, it is seen to, uh, to a great extent. Okay. Um, Sister um, Hamza from Egypt, she asked um, the person that is uh, referring to an orphan. She wants to set up an orphan. Is it the orphan that we find in the orphanage? Are they described as orphans? Well, anybody who is, uh, uh, as far as I understand, this may be a better question for Sheikh Mohammed because this is his speciality. I, like to hear I the am an you orphan don't. myself. Both of my parents have died. And when I was in Malaysia, by the way, with Hussein Yi, is a beautiful orphanage over there. They've just built. I wish you would pray for him and those children. It's wonderful. I was so beautiful and so wonderful there. And they have a masala there. And I told him, you know, both of my parents are dead. Could I qualify as a yatim <laughs> myself? I could stay here. The children thought it was rather humorous. And Hussein Yi didn't take me very serious, <laughs> but uh, he even explained that in, a, in uh, Islam, that when a father dies, then they talk about them being an orphan. It's not both parents necessarily. Well, if the father has passed away, then they might call him a yatim. Is that what you know? O only with the lower addition, which is, instead of saying, I'm an orphan, I would say, I was. Because in Islam, a yatim is a child who loses either both parents or at least the father and under the puberty age. 
So if somebody lost... Oh, I didn't know this part. Under the age of the puberty. Yes. So well, somebody, I guess I qualify that. <laughs> so the Prophet ﷺ was a yatim, but until the puberty age. After ah. that, he's not a yatim anymore. Ah. So you're not a yatim, Shaykh. So, so you that's why I'm not qualified to stay in the same orphanage. Okay, well, we got that answer. I love this guy. He's so serious. And you watch his and face. What? All the funny stuff has happened. Did I go to the moon? And he's sitting there. Next caller, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you're a yatim, I would love to adopt you. Would you adopt? <laughs> oh, thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Dr. Zakir, we have about four questions here about bid'ah being practiced in India. And they're, they're asking you if you can do programs on, your, on a peace TV. For example, the first question we have about the salah, saying the darood after it. And uh, we have another question here from Sister Um Habiba. She says that the women are more responsible for the bid'ah in India. How do you respond to all these questions? In fact, there are many programs on the peace TV, alhamdulillah, which focus on removing the bid'ah. And you know there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of bidah throughout the world. And every culture has their own set That's of right. bidah. And India not being unlike, they have many bidahs. Mm -hmm. Anything which is against the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, which people think it's part of the deen, it's a duty to, to tell them that this is not our deen. And this comes because of the culture. What we realize that Indians, most of us initially, we were Hindus. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we don't have Arab blood in us. Maybe a few. <laughs> but the majority of us, we are coming from a background which were Hindus. Maybe of grandfather, great great grandfather. So many of the practices of our great great grandfather's religion do creep into us. So mm -hmm. though we do become Muslims, there are some of the practices which creep into us, and we substitute that. That's how we find these various pada. So it's yeah. our duty to point out that this is not part of Islam. It is an innovation that came later on. That is the reason we say that anyone says anything about Deen, he should back it up with a reference from the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Mm -hmm. And I say. If any scholar says anything, let him be the greatest scholar in the world. Mm. We follow Allah, His commandment in the Quran, and the Prophet Muhammad His commandments, and His way of life, and the next few generations. Any scholar after that says anything. If he does not refer to these sources, whatever he says doesn't carry weight. If it's mm. a part of deen. If it's something else, is different. We're talking about mamla, talking about science, technology, is different. But if it's talking about the deen, uh, about the ibadah, Ibadat. It should be backed up from proof from the Quran worship. and the Sahih Hadith. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Worship. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, the easiest way to remove it, any scholar says anything, let him be the most famous. Therefore I say, what Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. But whenever I give, I've, I always, when I give answer, I back it up with the reference of the Quran and Sahih Hadith. Even if you try it and it, and it does work, still <laughs> it's not uh, sunnah. Not because you tried it, you tried something and it does work, like you recited a certain chapter several times and you say... This is cool. This is good uh, as far as if somebody is sick, you can recite this chapter Sorry, several right. times. You cannot say, I tried it myself and it does work. <laughs> you cannot say that. That's right. So the main thing is that whenever anything is deen, it should be back to the Quran. So when you find all these innovations coming in India, mm. I request the people, the Muslims, to ask reference from the shaykh. Yeah. And if the shaykh give references, backed up with proof, if it's then the say hadith, that means that it is the part of deen. If it's not, then just by saying that my sheikh said so and so, or this great scholar said so and so, that's not sufficient for it to be part of the deen. Okay, Jazakallah khair. We have Sister Noor from Malaysia. Assalamu alaykum, Sister. You're live on Ask with her. Your questions, please. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Wa barakatuh. Especially, I'd like to say thank you. Alhamdulillah. Um, um, you soup a stays because, you know, I really miss your show. Take a break. Um, it's short. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, but it's very, very powerful, you know, it's very inspirational. Um, uh, to, of course, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Salah for all your wisdom, uh, in Ashuda. And of course, Dr. Zaki Knight, the first time I heard your, um, your section where you spoke about, uh, you know, uh, in your, in your speech, um, it really, me and my husband both just, our mouth just gets open. Um, it's so inspirational. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Um, thank you to all of you. You are a real inspiration. Okay. Okay. That's, that's Sister Noor there from Malaysia. Brother Ayman, uh, Dr. Muhammad Salah mentioned an ayah from the Quran. He wants to know the correct translation of the ayah. The verse says, wal mu'minuna wal mu'minatu ba'duhum awliya'u ba'd, which means the, the believing men and the believing women. And there is a confirmation, normally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He wants to address the ummah, He does not have to express both the masculine and the feminine. Because if the masculine is mentioned, it covers both masculine and feminine. 
So he explicitly, uh, explicitly expressed by bo uh, using both uh, the, the masculine and the feminine pronouns in order to indicate that whether men or women, the believing men and the believing women are supporters of one another, like one unit. What do they do? What are the symptoms of this unity? This walaya, awliya means supporters, united, how? The, the, the symptoms of uh, this unity and this support is clearly obvious in the following. They enjoin what's right and they forbid what's evil. And that will take us to Sister Wafat's question. That if you notice that somebody, whether you know him or you don't, this is involved in uh, any kind of sin, even if you yourself is involved in it, it is your duty to enjoin what's right and forbid what's evil. The idea which some people contemplate that, you know, I'm a self, I'm a sinner. How could I approach somebody to quit the sin? This is one of the whispers of Satan with which he blocks and hinders people and the believing men and women from fulfilling the very important task through which they were praising the Quran. Made khayru ummah. In addition to, as the Sheikh said, no one is infallible. So if I'm going to wait until I improve myself to be a perfect individual in order to be able to give da'wah in June what's right and forbid what's evil, that means it's not going to happen. So this quality will be wasted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in order to be awliya to one another, to be awliya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He began by saying, they enjoin what's right and they forbid what's evil. The second point is that among us, the means of steadfast on the straight path is to give da'wah through enjoining what's right and forbidding what's evil what happens when you see somebody is doing any kind of sin and you say you know don't you know that this is haram etc you're gonna sit by yourself and you say you know what I just asked somebody to quit doing this or I asked somebody to pray at night and do qiyamul layl I myself I'm not doing that mm -hmm. so that will encourage you to line up yes. and get back on the straight path so this very important quality Allah began so, with it is as important as offering the prayers and paying alms. Such people, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Sayarhamuhumullah. If you fulfill the previous requirements, enjoy what's right, forbid what's evil, offer your ibadat, Allah will definitely cover you with His mercy. I like the way he was giving free plugs to your other show, Straight Path. That was nice. I have a very tricky question for you, by the way, Sheikh Yusuf. But we'll take a short break here on you Ask Buddha, him to be loose. And we'll be back <laughs> right after this, inshallah. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> the deeds are bound by its intentions. The deeds that we do, we have to have a sincere intentions that we're doing it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the best definitions of things, the right vision, the criteria in which we would get to know what is right and what is wrong through the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu The tafsir of the Quran is to explain, is to interpret the best words, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but later on they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result, it's not a cover-up. 
We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Ask Huda. We still welcome on the show Dr. Muhammad Salah, Dr. Zakir Naik, and Sheikh Yusuf Estas. Um, Sheikh Yusuf Estas, I would like to start with you. Um, we have a question here that says that you contradict uh, Dr. Zakir Naik on one of your website in terms of the belief of creation. What? <laughs> That's what it says. And that you. Um, Wait a minute, back up. Start again. It said what? That you contradicted. Dr. Zakir Naik on your website with regards to creation. You said that the Big Bang didn't happen and he said that the Big Bang happened. Oof. Whoa. Well, first of all, I don't know where they got this idea from. I know the website they're talking about. It's called scienceislam.com. Now, I had to mention the site because, you see, uh, they ask about it. But it's on scienceislam.com. But I would never contradict this man. First of all, he's my beloved. I love him too much. Number two, he's my teacher. Uh, number three, I like to go visit him in India when they have the conferences. Uh, number four, uh, you know, he's our media partner for our Guide Us uh, TV project, as you guys are as well. And I could give a long list. So there's, don't say there's any problem between me and my beloved Dr. Zakir Knight. Okay. Number two, number two. It is in the poor way that I constructed my wording on the site. That's all. Because I have heard his uh, explanation a number of times because I do reruns on my website with his stuff. I know what he <laughs> said exactly. And his explanation is perfect. But what I was saying in my example was you don't see order come out of chaos. Exactly. And the example that I gave, one of them is, if you have a junkyard full of metal cars and old things, and a tornado came through and threw it all up in the air, then it doesn't fall down and make a brand new car. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, this is what we're saying is whatever happened wasn't by accident. Planned. And when, when I grew up, they told us the Big Bang meant that everything happened just like an explosion and there was no cause behind it. There was no purpose behind it. And this is what we were criticizing, not the event itself. And with that, I would like, Dr. Zecker, if you didn't mind, just say a little something about how you expressed it and make the, our caller feel better. <laughs> as far as the creation of the universe, Allah SWT says in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, أَوَلَمْ يَلَّ لَذِينَ قَفِرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كَانَ تَرَتْكُنْ فَتَكْنَهُمَا That do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. So this is what we learned in school, when we were in school 30 years back, 40 years back. There were a group of scientists who, in the early part of 1970s, they described how the universe came into existence. And they said there was, uh, initially there was the primary nebula, then there was the Big Bang, no. then there was secondary separation, which gave rise to galaxies, the stars, the sun, the moon, and the earth on which we live. This is how our universe came to existence. So the same thing, which we came to know about 40 years back, is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago in a nutshell. So what the scientists have discovered recently, Quran mentioned in a nutshell 14 years ago. Because Quran is a divine revelation. But so, it is explained in the Quran in a reasonable way that it was very planned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not like the atheists uh, believe nope. they say that it was an accident. Uh, it was a challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَ رَتْقًا They were just one piece. Actually, if you realize, Sheikh, uh, the, there are two types of uh, uh, floating in the market. Or mm -hmm. One is the theory of creation yeah. and the other is uh, theory by chance. Yes. Yeah. So we can't mix both. Theory of creation believes that there's a concept of God. Theory of creation, mm. where the Christian believe, the Muslim believe, they mm. believe behind this there is a planner. Yes. So the theory of, uh, like, like Darwin's theory, mm -hmm. uh, natural selection, that is by chance. So mm -hmm. both are opposite actually. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. If someone gets that Big Bang took by, 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 just by chance, it's not right. I mean, what they say, that it is a theory of creation. 
So what we believe as Muslims and as Christians is the theory of creation. Now who did the secondary? Whether you call the planner, the maker, the creator, you call it Allah, the word may differ. Uh, we Muslims say it's Allah. So the theory of uh, by chance and a uh, the theory of creation. So we, we believe in theory of creation. And the Big Bang, it mainly supports the theory of creation. Okay. But the Big Bang just, just didn't take by chance. By itself, yeah. And the galaxies of billions of years, they cooled down. It was... It took place for a, uh, for a purpose. I would really creator. like to see this opportunity and um, benefit from it that, uh, and share with the viewers and the seekers of knowledge in case that we might see a view of a great respected scholar uh, contradicting apparently the view of another scholar that we should not be, be judgmental immediately Sorry. or pass on a ruling and say, look, his opinion is better or this guy is a little taller or he's a fair skin, so his opinion must be... <laughs> or yeah, cuter. I, I have, yeah, or cuter. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard things like that, by the way. So I wouldn't say that. Rather, I would have to find out on what basis the Sheikh said so and so. Dr. Zakir Naik said, no matter who is the speaker, how great is the Sheikh, if his views are in line with the Quran and the Sunnah, fine. Otherwise, it would be neglected. And that was the statement of uh, um, uh, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Malik ibn Anas, uh, all the Imams. So now we find out for, uh, that there is no conflict. Yes. Basically, both views are perfectly in line with the Quran and with the Sunnah. It is the viewer or the, the, the person who is browsing the website who is not able to grasp on the real meaning of the statement. The so right word should not be contradiction. The right word is... Uh, it's a different uh, view. Uh, contradistinction. Okay. Contradistinction <laughs> means the same thing can be said in two different ways. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. For say example, if I again. say that I am honest, and Sheikh Yusuf said that, uh, that True Zakir is tall. So man can be honest and tall. Yeah. If someone says I'm honest and the other person says he's dishonest, then that's contradiction. Mm -hmm. What was contradiction. the word you said? Uh, contradistinction. Contradistinction. Contradistinction? Yeah. That's a word? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now he's contradicting you. Contradistinction? <laughs> hmm. so okay. Learn, we're learning every day. <laughs> I learned something every day. <laughs> okay, we have two callers from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We have Sister Mariam. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. You're live in Askoda. Your questions, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, we are very, very glad to see all of you together in our favorite show, like our favorite speakers and our favorite show, all three of you. Like, this is our dream Mashallah. come true, mashallah. May, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you all, uh, your, your work easy for you and accept every every single work that you do from you. I mean, I mean. And you know, mashallah, we have learned and benefited so much from all three of you. Uh, and you know, um, like, years since I've been uh, listening to all of you, me and my family and all my friends, and uh, now that I'm... Uh, Mashallah, I'm spreading all your teachings to my students and everybody I know, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and the question uh, I have today is like, this question has been bothering me the whole day today. Okay. And Alhamdulillah, I see all three of you together. So I think it's a perfect opportunity for me to ask you. Okay. Um, uh, my question is regarding uh, non-Muslims. Uh, for example, if we um, get in touch with a non-Muslim lady uh, who has like good views about Islam, okay? Yeah, she has good views about Muslims uh, themselves. But we get to meet her for only a day, maybe an hour or two. So is it appropriate to hand her a copy of the Mus'haf, like the translation of the Qur'an in the first meeting? How do okay. we talk to her about Islam the first meeting? We don't know whether we'll see her again or not. Okay. It's just a meeting. So how do we approach her about Islam? Like, um, because we'll keep fe feeling guilty our whole life we don't talk to her about, you know, some good things about uh, our religion or maybe one word that comes from out of her mouth might affect her and lead her towards Islam. So okay. what's the way to deal with her? Okay. And another thing, um, my mother has a message for you all. Uh, she wants you all to make dua that we get righteous and educated spouses like Amen. you all who Amen. are striking an excellent balance between uh, deen and dunya. For us Amen. and our friends and all the girls who are here, um, you know, um, single, <laughs> waiting for spouses. Okay. And Sheikh uh, Yusuf and Sheikh um, um, uh, Dr. Zakir Naik, I just wanted to ask you if you'll be coming to Jeddah for a lecture or not. Because, mashallah, whenever you come, we attend your lecture. So, is there a lecture now, this month? Are you coming here? Okay. Next I'll allow them to answer that question. Inshallah, we have Sister Samaya as well from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So, now, alaikum, Sister. You're live in Askara. Wa alaikum, Sister. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Go ahead. I'm happy to see you all here. Jazakallah khair, Sister. Go ahead. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. Uh, Sheikh, I, uh, I just want to call you like that. I, I don't have a really question. But my sister want to ask one question to you, please. Okay. 
Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Let's you uh, the recent heroes of our nation. Welcome uh, to the show, and we are very happy to see you all together like that. Bar- and I ask you to pray for us, for my family particularly, and our Muslim ummah. Yeah, okay. Yes. You have a question, Sister Sumaya? I have a question. I'm a Sadaf. I have a question regarding the marriage. I need some good supplications for the marriage. That they prefer for the young cup, uh, young generation, for the youth, that they will get the good partner in the future. You okay. Got it. Okay. And uh, please, all the Sheikh, Sheikh Mr. Zakir Naik, and Mr. Yusuf is to pray for us yes, and pray for Muslim Ummah. Okay. Okay. Jazakallah khair, Sister Sumayy. I wish to be like you all. Inshallah. Inshallah, Sister Sumayy. And, and, and I love you, Sheikh Yusuf is I really love you. Okay. Jazakallah khair, Sister Sumayy, there from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Okay, we also have Brother Muhammad from Qatar. Assalamu alaikum. Brother, you live and ask for their questions, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair. I couldn't resist myself. Uh, there were so many brothers who are from India and they were saying that to, to, bring, uh, to take uh, Sheikh Muhammad and uh, Sheikh Yusuf to, to Pakistan. Well, hmm. I come from Pakistan and I want all of you to come to Pakistan. And <laughs> People like you uh, needed there from south to the no. north, and there was a lot of uh, beat up in practice. And we have another extreme uh, extremism in the north, you know, in, in form of uh, oh. uh, Taliban, uh, as you say. Uh, so, uh, can Dr. Zakir Naik and his team build a school uh, which he has done in, in Bombay, and you know, uh, bless our children with the with all the the blessing uh, from the Quran, so now we can get. Mashallah. Uh, Brother Muhammad here from Qatar. Um, so let's go to Sister Samaya's question, Dr. Muhammad. She says, what are some supplications that they can make in order to find the right spouse? Well, the best supplication in this regard is by the end of uh, chapter Al-Furqan, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us how the servants of the most merciful uh, invoke Allah the Almighty by saying, ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذريتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما. Our Lord grant us from our spouses an hour of spring, قرة أعين, comfort for our eyes, peace of mind, and make us leaders for the pious. So in order to have a goodly offspring, you have to have a goodly spouse. So this dua, uh, whether you're a single or you're married, uh, the couple or the singles, everybody should really invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this dua a lot. You said a, this was at the end of Surah Al-Furqan. Al-Furqan, Al-Furqan. 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 Yes, the Al-Furqan. criteria. MashaAllah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sister um, so Mariam's question from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. She says, is it uh, permissible for us to give this the person we meet and we only think that we'll meet her for one time? Can we give her the mushaf? I hope the answer is yes, because we've been doing that for a lot of years. <laughs> and uh, But the one who really got excited about this was Ahmed Didat. And may Allah, may Allah have, have mercy, mercy on upon him, him <laughs> bless him, and keep him, uh, give him Chandami. Because he was one of the first people to really promote the idea <coughs> of getting the... Quran in Quran. the English language. He had the Abdullah Yusuf Ali That's translation, right. I think. Right. When I was in South Africa uh, with IPCI, they wanted me to take that position that he had filled, you see. And, and I said, there's no way I could ever be in the shadow of this man. Hmm. But one of the things that I did when I said it is this. I held that Quran of his in my hands. And I just, I just realized how important it is to get the message out to every single person and that is Allah's word we don't have the right to keep it back but I would like for you to comment on that because I know you've been putting out a lot of Qurans too I have a sister has a question that when we meet a person and we have a couple of hours what should we do exactly. should we give the Quran Excellent. and there are various ways of doing dawah some are less effective some are more effective uh, first thing what I do is when I meet a non-Muslim is I ask her or him up front what do you feel is wrong with Islam because even if you speak a thousand good points about Islam, that person will say, yes, Islam has got these thousand good points, but it's the same Muslim who marry more than one woman. Hmm. You are the same people who are terrorists. You are a fundamentalist. What I do, and these few negative points at the back of his mind, 
will prevent him from accepting the beauty of Islam. Yeah. Yes. So whenever I meet a non-Muslim, I ask him up front, what do you feel is wrong with Islam? With your limited knowledge, whether right or wrong, what do you feel is wrong? And I make them comfortable that you can attack Islam, you can criticize the Quran. What do you feel is wrong? You tell us. And after we make them comfortable, they pose about three or four questions. And in the experience that I have for the past couple of decades, they pose about three or four questions which invariably fall amongst the 20 most common questions. So first, when the cup is filled, if you pour in, it will overflow. So empty the cup and then pour in. So sure. when you remove the few doubts, which are there in the mind, then even if you speak, maybe five or ten good points about Islam, they're accepted. So my first point is, I remove the negative point that they have about Islam. Yes. Yeah. And then speak the good points. That's and very smart. Uh, as far as the question is concerned, can you give them a sub? I feel you should take the opportunity. You should not lose any opportunity. You should, because what the Quran can do is wonders. This is basically the thought of the main principle of the deen, which is Tawheed. Allah begins by saying negation. La. Ooh, affirmation. La, la ilaha. La ilaha. Yes. yes. Then illa Allah. And I, if, if you don't mind, I have something to share here, sure. which is, uh, we do learn from the invitees. We do learn from the people whom we give them da'wah. I was once given a lecture to uh, some new Muslims as well as guests who have not accepted Islam yet. And I raised the question uh, of um, how did he come to Islam? So that it would inspire the new people, the guests, to take the opportunity to learn about Islam. So one of the audience said, basically, I have seen somebody carrying a nicely decorated book. The cover was a hard cover and it has gold writing in it and it was kind of strange to me. So I asked him, what is it? And he said, that is the Quran. This is how I was introduced to the Quran and this is how I was attracted to read the Quran. So I remember once I was flying back from California to Texas. And at the lounge, there was a bunch of uh, cheerleaders. And you know what I mean. And they were so disturbing, so I just had to step away. Because I couldn't just sit in the same area with those guys, with those girls. And uh, I was shocked when we got to board the plane that I happened to be sitting in the middle of them, surrounded with the cheerleaders. Was this Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, keep going. I was really offended. And here we're talking about almost four hours flight. I didn't know what to do laughing, screaming, and shouting, praying around, and I was sitting in the middle of them, in, in the last four or five seats. So I remember this um, uh, idea of one of the invitees when he said that I saw the glitter of the cover of the Quran, so I wanted to read it. Then immediately I had, not the Quran, rather the book of Riyadh al-Salihin, Gardens of the Pious, and I had it in my backpack. So I pulled it out and I waved with it. I did that deliberately. And once I just opened it, and one of the girls who was sitting next to me saw this writing and the calligraphy on the cover of the book. You, Sheikh Yusuf, you should expect what's going to happen. She screamed and said, Wow, what is this? I said, Well, it does work to myself, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw this opportunity, and believe me, Dr. Zakir, the next maybe three hours, we were talking about Islam. Yeah. And the girls in the front seat turned around to listen. And everybody was listening. So now they ask for a copy. How can we get a copy of that? This what I'm trying to say is, it is not by taking the initiative and shoving the medicine down the throat and saying, you got to take it to become a Muslim. Mm. Rather, you know how a girl really is, is really uh, wanted whenever somebody is pursuing her, but when she offers herself, she becomes... A little cheap. He's not interested anymore. So, same way, same mentality. If you tell somebody, take the Quran, you're going to read, you're going to be convinced, and you'll accept Islam. So basically, you're telling him not to read it, because if you read it, there's some sort of magic, you will turn to Islam. No, this is not the way. Rather, I will discuss the idea, and the ideology, the mentality, the belief that I have, why and where from. If they have any objections or misconceptions, like you said, I said, you know what? You can't find the answer to all of that in this book. If it is only 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we need to focus on number one. If we have a very short time, whether we have a short time or a long time, we need to focus number one on the concept of Tawheed. Tawheed. Not to talk about, you know, we Monetism, pray five times. Oneness of God. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, yeah. um, Dr. Zakir, we had Hamza from Malaysia asking about the splitting of the moon and he wanted us to send a, a mission to the moon to find out. <laughs> but um, how can we prove this? 
as far as we know that there are few hundred miracles which are prophet in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned the sai hadith some in the quran and one mentioned the quran shakul kamar the splitting of the moon uh, there have been researches done which do say that there are certain fissures in the mm. moon which can be attributed to this miracle of the prophet mm. as far as i am concerned what i believe that all the earlier prophets that came musa alaihi salam isa alaihi salam that time was the time of miracles was the time of mujiza like musa alaihi salam gave life to the dead i mean uh, uh, isa alaihi salam gave life to the dead he healed those born blind and lepers musa alaihi salam threw the stick a staff it became a snake so that time was the age of miracles today is not the age of miracles then came the age of literature and poetry and quran is the best arabic literature on the face of the mm -hmm. earth today today is the age of science and technology what i prefer that all these miracles though they are mentioned in the sahih hadith a muslim never boasts of it mm -hmm. we are aware of it we agree with it what yeah. we boast is the miracle of the miracle the ultimate miracle that is the quran yeah the because all thing. the other miracles which were done by musa alaihi salam isa alaihi salam and the other prophets you cannot go back in time to prove they're buried with them yes because musa alaihi salam uh, uh, he split the scene to two but today we cannot go back in time to prove whether it happened or not they can be signs but we can't go back in time isa alaihi mm -hmm. salam gave life to the dead mm -hmm. if i say that give me proof we can't go back to uh, 2000 years back and prove he gave life to the dead mm -hmm. those were miracles that satisfied the people of that time mm -hmm. because those were messengers which were meant for those people only but prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was not a messenger only sent for people of that time all the earlier messengers were sent only for those people and for that time and the message was supposed to be followed in totality uh, till a particular time period but because prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was not sent only for the muslims or the arabs he was sent for the whole of humanity and his message was not only meant at that time it was meant to be followed till eternity therefore allah subhanahu wa taala gave him a miracle the glorious quran which can be proved which uh, could be proved that time can be proved today and can be proved inshallah even in future so i normally don't pay so much importance on this do i do agree in the miracles of the prophet mm -hmm. but when i have tried to convince a non muslim i don't use them they may be as a last resort or just as an ancillary thing what is quran so i say okay let's analyze today if we put the test of science to the quran if we put the test of science to all the religious scriptures all the religious scriptures fail the test except the quran true subhanallah so with the help of the quran for example big bang i spoke earlier mm -hmm. uh, who could have mentioned that you know what we discovered recently yes. what i tell to an atheist whenever atheist comes and says i don't believe in god mm. i congratulate him people say why am i congratulating an atheist mm. the reason i'm congratulating him is because most of the other human beings they are doing blind belief he is a christian because father is a christian he is a hindu because father is hindu many muslims are muslim because father is a muslim yes so this atheist is thinking you know oh. that you know he may be coming from religious background mm. though the reason i congratulate him because he has said the first part of the islamic shahada la ilaha ah, that there is no god yeah. the only thing i have to do is allah okay, okay. so it's a half congratulation it is not a full one <laughs> go yes congratulate <laughs> because half yeah. my job is done to the other non muslim who mm. believes in a false god first i have to prove to him the god is worshiping is wrong and then prove to him what to allah subhanahu wa taala yeah half my job is done so with yeah. the help of science if because today we believe that quran is far superior to science but because science is the yardstick of the unbeliever the atheist i am using their yardstick and comparing with our yardstick the quran and i prove that the quran is far superior so with the help of the latest technology what science has developed trying to say that quran is already mentioned 14 years back that gives more authenticity to the quran mm -hmm. and proves it is an infallible book and the word of allah subhanahu wa taala so using the scientific modern knowledge about big bang about geology about geography so i've written a book yes. and today you know we know the quran has more than 6000 verses yes out of which more than a thousand speak about science so quran is not a book of science s c i e n c e but it's a book of signs s i g n s it's a book of ayats true and out of 6000 signs more than a thousand speak about science so this way mashallah if you hear my talk on quran modern science very interesting we can prove to non muslim exists of allah subhanahu wa taala as well as quran is the miracle of miracles so what we boast is about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is the reason allah says in surah ankabut chapter 29 verse mm -hmm. 48 that we made the last and final messenger an ummi so that the blabbers of vanity will not take an excuse that he wrote the book subhanallah
Though even the most intelligent man cannot write the book. And Omin means? Uh, unlettered. <laughs> unlettered. Unlettered. Illiterate. Illiterate. Jazakallah khair for clarifying that, Dr. Zakir Naik. We have Sister Raihana from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. You're live on Ask Buddha. Yes, wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I have a question for all Sheikh that is there an Islamic university when, where my children can study uh, BAMA like in Islamic studies where, can do, where they can study this because I don't know any uh, university here which they, in which they ex, uh, accept expatriates. So it, it, I, will, I wanted to know this and I have asked two questions uh, but I didn't receive my reply. That can girls stay in hostel and uh, why Dr. Zakir Naik uh, school is not having a hostel? So I will be thankful if he <laughs> answer this. Okay. And uh, I wanted to know if there, uh, if Ummul Qura or any other university accept uh, expatriates. Thank you. Jazakallah okay. Assalamu alaikum. Well, this is Sister Zak Raihana there from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And we have also Sister Asma from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. Good evening. Go, good evening. go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Good, e good evening. Good evening to you. Alaykum salam. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, sister. Hello? Good evening. Yes. Can yes. you hear me? Salam yes. alaykum. You, you need to know your head. <laughs> I think the line is thin. Um, but I want to thank all our various hosts over there who have been enjoying their programs and it's been inspirational. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Huda. Jazakallah khair, Sister Asma there from Nigeria. Um, do you care to answer Sister Raihana's question? She says that um, your school does not have hostels, and if it does have hostels, can girls stay in the hostel without a mahram? Uh, the question is that why don't I encourage hostel facility in our school, Islamic International School? The school that I started, Islamic International School, it's a unique school, and we have a concept of not only training the children, uh, we even train the parents. Mm. So it is compulsory that the children should stay with the parent. We don't want that the child stays with us for 14 years and once he comes out, it is pouring water would ducks back. We train him something else and the parent do something else. Therefore, to get admission in our school is very difficult. We take interview of the mother separately, of the father separately and the child separately. It's not required that we only take intelligent children. We take a balance between the interview of the father, the mother and the child. Mm. And the criteria to get admission is absolutely based on Quran and Sunnah. Alhamdulillah. And one of the criteria is that besides the parents offering five times salah, mothers doing hijab, etc., which no one did this earlier, and people thought that I was a lunatic, I wouldn't be successful. <laughs> and Allah's help is there, mashallah. It is the most sought after school today. And one of the criteria is that the mother should attend once, to, once a week of Islamic program, lectures, compulsory. Ah. And the father once a fortnight. He may be a millionaire, but he has to come and attend our Islamic lectures. And we say our school is not based on any other teachings of any scholars. It is based on Quran and Sayyid Hadith. Allah. And we want even the parents to follow that. So when the children are close to the parents, the parents also become Islamic and then they support the children. Otherwise, if we take a child in, uh, in a hostel, he is with us for 13 years and when he goes out, the parents have a different view and they both will be at long end. Either the child will change most often. So that is the reason I don't personally encourage uh, uh, hostels in our school. We want the parents to be involved in the school, so it's more of a package. And we find that the, that the practice of Islam amongst the parents changing, mashallah. And our children teach the parent how to offer proper salah, about makharij, about Quran. So they are the teachers of the parents. If we don't have this concept, it will not work. That is the reason Aziz is unique. And once a person puts uh, once a parent puts the child in the school. In other schools, you do the interview, nursery put him, finish after 30 minutes, they take him out. Mm. Here, once he puts the child, the real test starts. Mm. Yes. Attending the program, looking. So we say, okay, now we have practicals of salah. True. So the father has to teach the child who is uh, four years old. So while the father is teaching him, he, he learns salah mm. correctly. So this is the concept that we started. Alhamdulillah, it's so successful that mashallah, we have got requests from a few hundred cities in the world. Yeah. We have Sister Kubra from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. You're live on Ask Buddha. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa Yeah, I watch both Peace TV and uh, Huda channel, and I watch uh, Mr. Zakinak and Dr. Salah. 
Uh, but I'm confused about the answer. I want to know whether the face cover, covering of the face of women is compulsory if in Islam. Uh, because Dr. Zakir Naik says that uh, no hadith uh, supports this, but uh, Saleh Sab says that it is compulsory. So I would like you both to uh, clarify my answer. Okay. Here we go. Again. <laughs> okay. We also have Um Omar from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, sister. You're live on Ask Twitter. Questions, please. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Thank you for the question. I'm not an excited to see or three great personal from Buddha. That is that's on life. I have a humble request to Dr. to all the three of you that I uh, hope you plan out and launch receive where will be Islamic channels like Huda, Peace and Share Islam of all the three individual channels which you have. Okay. Okay. I think, uh, so Omar, Omar, your, the line is very bad, and we'll ask the brothers in the control to take your question. And we'll take a short break here on Ask Huda, and we'll be back right after this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The deeds are bound by its intentions. The deeds that we do, we have to have a sincere intentions that we're doing it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the best definitions of things, the right vision, the criteria in which we would get to know what is right and what is wrong through the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The tafsir of the Quran is to explain, is to interpret the best words, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but later on they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result, it's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Ask Huda. Just a quick reminder of our telephone numbers 00202385552482 or 249. And also, you can send us an email at ask, that's ask at huda.tv. I think the, the, the problem started right now when we have contradicting ideas, or is it contra? Distinct. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> we have Sister Cobra. Different asking. opinion, not a different opinion. <laughs> no. Okay, uh, Sister Cobra so. asking that you guys have uh, opposing opinions with regards to covering the face. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala nabihi Mustafa. I do believe if we um, recall all the episodes of Ask Koda from the beginning on some particular issues, specifically. Uh, the niqab or the face veil or the cover normally I answer as follows I say there are two different opinions so and I say different. the opinion of the vast majority of the fuqaha that covering the face is mere recommended but 
I say the more right view that it is mandatory based on the following evidence. So there is a big difference between that you have this view and the Sheikh have oh, okay. a different view. <laughs> sure. It is fair and balanced. It is fair enough to uh, not just give a fatwa. We have trained uh, our audience, alhamdulillah, shukullah, that we're not the type of haram or halal, <laughs> yes or no. We don't do that. Rather, Askoda is an educational program. You know the reason. Why do you adopt this view? Why do you say there are two or three or four different views, but this specific view is more right? So you don't say, I am Hanafi, or I am Shafi, or I am Maliki, or whatever. Rather, I have followed the Quran and the Sunnah. Based on tons of evidences that many of the scholars have concluded that covering the face for a woman is a must. One of those references, for instance, through the diversion meaning, in order to understand the, the, the term, the diversion meaning, you have to mm -hmm. have studied the principles of jurisprudence. When the Prophet ﷺ says for a woman who is performing hajj, it is not permissible to cover your face if you are in a state of ihram. So through the diversion meaning that we understand that in normal cases, what is the original condition that the face is covered? It's like when a man is wearing regular clothes, but in ihram you're not allowed to wear the regular clothes or any such clothes. This is a normal case. So this is one incident. Then we have also with regards to the conditions of hajj, the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha, narrated that whenever we were performing hajj with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we uncover our faces because it is restricted for a woman and for a man as well to cover the face during ihram. Mm -hmm. Unless if men were passing by, then we lowered our isdal. What does this signify? It signifies that they understood. From the verse, يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِي بِهِنَّ To cover their entire bodies, including the face. It is very interesting that we have some statements of the companions, of the interpreters of the Qur'an, Abdullah ibn Abbas, who is known as Turjuman al-Qur'an, the best one who understood the Qur'an after the Prophet ﷺ and Salam. interpreted that to us. When he was uh, asked about what is the meaning of يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِي بِهِنَّ he covered his head, uh, his head and face and he showed his eye in order to say this is how it should be. This is the opinion of those who say it is uh, a must in addition to lists of other evidences. What's really interesting is the majority or the fuqaha of those who say that it is mere recommended, not a must, they said. But in case of fearing the temptation or the fitna, both ways, either tempting men or being tempted by men, then it is a must for a woman to cover her face. This is also the view of the fuqa who said that it is not a wajib, rather it is recommended. I don't see any more turbulent time or fit and eras than the time which we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. So, I say, if you believe based on the available evidence that it is a must, or you fear a fitna for yourself, or giving fitna to others, such as if a woman, Allah bless her with a beautiful face. Basically, the beauty of a woman is focused 90% in her face. And that's why in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, انظر إليها فإنه أحرى أن يؤدم بينكما If somebody is interested to marry some woman, before proposing to her and talking to her family, take a look at her in order to see whether you really, you make up your mind, whether you really, because beauty is one of the components of making the decision, right? Look at what? Swimming suit? Mm. While she's taking a dive? No. Look at the face. Look at the face. Every party and every group have their uh, proofs as well, but here I just summarize in brief, and I said, after all, I feel it is more preferable. And it is more befitting for a woman nowadays, if she's living in a society which does not have a problem with that, to adopt covering her face. Wallahu a'lam. Before I ask Dr. Zakir to comment, we have Brother Muhammad from UAE. Assalamu alaikum, Brother. You're live and ask other questions, Salaam please. Assalamu alaikum, Brother. It's such a pleasure to, uh, to be able to talk to all three scholars right now. Mashallah. I've been waiting for a long time, but uh, finally I find myself fortunate to speak to Dr. Zakir Naik. Uh, uh, your sister as well as Sheikh Salah. 
First of all, I would like to thank Huda TV for giving us the possibility of bringing this three noble and three gentle men here in front of us. Alhamdulillah. Sharing their views with us here. Thanks a lot. May Allah give you all the correct reason and he'll be only able to reward you properly. I have three questions right now to all these you know, uh, scholars right now. Okay. Uh, firstly, it was, uh, I was born in a Hanfi family back in India. And a pure Hanfi family following, you know, Hanfi uh, Sikh. When I, I came back to UAE, oh, there are different uh, Sikhs here. There are different mosques here. Uh, yeah. What I've heard from Sheikh Salah is, uh, we are supposed to follow, you know, the Imam which, you know, of the, the mosque. If, if it's a matter of fikra, if you have a doubt about that. Yeah. Now, what has happened with a period of time is like my Salah, as you know, I find sometimes, you know, different fiqhs, uh, sometimes Hanfi I'm using, sometimes uh, I'm using uh, Shafai Maslak, uh, you know, some method. So I get mixed up. Will my prayers be accepted or what exactly is it? I'm very confused about that. Okay. 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 There are so many fiqhs. Uh, okay. Second question, what I have to ask is, I'm a science teacher. And I constantly, you know, I am like always uh, questions related to evolution and questions related to Darwin's theory. Here. So okay. uh, what I've tried to do is I've tried to remove the Darwin theory from the curriculum only. But still, there are questions based on that here. I okay. completely ex explain to my students that evolution and Darwin theory is wrong. Mm -hmm. But still, what generally students ask me, and I also have a doubt about that, is how were all the organisms created? Were all of them created together? Okay. I believe on that, but I don't know exactly how it, it was. Okay. But if they were created together, what about the fossil records? Like some animals were created, or some organisms were created 1.5 million years ago, others 50 million years ago. Okay. How is the fossil record for that year? Okay. okay. And my third question is, uh, 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 third question is actually, I, as a teacher, try to, you know, uh, talk about Islam whenever I get a chance in my classroom. Mm -hmm. Will I be considered a dai that way? Will, will I be considered as a person who is uh, bringing people or advising people towards righteousness? As Dr. Zakir constantly keeps talk, talking to us about Surah Afar, that is a yardstick of you know, somebody who is being accepted in Islam. Mm -hmm. okay. Somebody who follows okay. righteousness and calls people to righteousness and patience. Okay. So as a teacher, I am in my class because I do not get enough time to move around and talk to people and exhort people or call people towards Islam. But okay. in my classroom, if I talk about Islam and talk about Allah, Okay. Will I be considered as a guy? Okay. And Does that I just have a request to Dr. Zakir Mayer. Can we have something like Ask Huda in Peace TV? I watch both the channels constantly. But on sometime, you know, when Huda, he is not showing Ask Huda, is not coming on a day. Uh -huh. I miss it a lot here. Can okay. we have something on Peace TV for that? Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot for the patience. Jazakallah khair, brother Muhammad there from UAE. And uh, Sister Latifa as well from the UAE. Assalamu alaikum, sister. You're live on Ask Huda. Your questions, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, how are you, squares? Alhamdulillah, wa shukrullah. I'm really happy to see my favorite squares live at um, at Kuda. And uh, related to the topic, um, I wanted to ask uh, Muhammad Salah a question. Okay. And um, when uh, the saying of the Prophet of Allah is Salam, "Aftiraf ummati rahma." And uh, is it uh, is it uh, authentic okay. or no? Okay. And uh, my, uh, my mother would like to have uh, the numbers of the scholars. Okay. Jazakallah khair, Sister Latifa. I'll ask the director as well to put the, ho the, the calls on hold because we're closing up here on Ask Huda. Um, care to, to comment on Dr. Salah's comment? Uh, as Sheikh Salah rightly said, that there are different opinions as far as the Naqab is further on. And I do agree with him totally. There are different opinions, and I do agree with him, as he said earlier, the most of the fuqah has. They say that it is not fard, but uh, it is uh, mustaba recommended. But there are quite a few scholars, or quite uh, few but large numbers. Few doesn't mean few, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. number they are large, who do say that very naqab is fard. And, and each of these two groups of scholars have given their reasoning. And as a person, as a Muslim, we analyze the reasoning. And what we feel is more close to Quran, so now we give the word. And as Sheikh Salar, he, he feels that wearing the naqab fard is the more appropriate based on Quran and Sunnah. And when I read the reasoning of both these group of scholars, I agree with uh, uh, Sheikh Nasir Dalmani. Not because he's Sheikh Nasir Dalmani, his reasoning. And in his book, he has given more than 20 reasoning, True. reasons why Naqab is not Fard. I myself could refute many of them, which I don't think it is correct. That it is, you know, like, uh, I, because I'm a debater. So whenever I give an answer, I punch holes in my own answer. <laughs> Out of them, there are at least seven, which I feel are irrefutable. And mm -hmm. if you go to my website, I've given those seven reasons, which is irrefutable, 
as far as I think that Naqab is not fard. And I, I being a debater, uh, their own debate with Sheikh uh, Muhammad Salah, mashallah, Sheikh okay, Sheikh Alhamdulillah is going to get knowledge. Oh, okay. But what I do is that whatever reasoning the other group of scholars have given, I use that in my favor. Okay. And out of that, I think two reasoning with Sheikh Salah said, he said that uh, while in uh, uh, Ahram, in Umrah, or when you go for Hajj, it is a, a lady who is in Ahram, her face uh, should not be covered. So he says that normally, if it's not covered, so the contrary is fard, his reason, which I disagree. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, if it is haram to cover the face, it becomes fard, then many things which is haram should become fard otherwise. Mm -hmm. In which I can give hundred things, in which it is haram and is not fard otherwise. Okay. Many things. Okay. Many. You can, you can give umpteen number of things. What I say, many things which are mubah and many things which are mustahab, they become haram. For example, shaving, for example, uh, 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 clipping the nails. You know, mustahab. It becomes haram during that state of haram. Many things. So many things which are mustahab become haram. There's not a single thing which is fard which becomes haram. If that's the case, offering salah is fard, then becomes haram during normal life? No. Mm -hmm. So in logic, this itself defeats the purpose. He's basically answering logic. the third part. De therefore, therefore, <laughs> therefore, I'm saying, but this again, I never go my answer based on logic. Mm -hmm. But logic Allah has given that brain to me, mashallah. This is not the reason why it is not fard. But logic, Allah has given me the brain. Any logical thing I can counter argue. Mm -hmm. Therefore, logic is not number one in Islam. Number one is Quran, then it's Sayyid Hadith. Logic is third. So this is not the reason. But the reason what the other people are giving, most of the scholars who say that Naqab is fard is on logic. It is not on Sayyid Hadith. No. Because for anything to be fard, it should be either proven from the Quran or from the statement of the Prophet. And if it's a derived yeah. thing, fine, there can be various derived things. Which also can be fard, but unless you have solid proof, you can't say anything is fard or haram. So most of the scholars who say nakab is fard, it, have, it is derived, and in derived you can turn the tables over. So if you say, therefore I say that if nakab, if showing the face is fard, mm -hmm. is fard, normal time it cannot be haram. Okay, that's, right? okay. that's, that's okay. one point. Uh -huh. Second <laughs> point, which I, I can go to every point, why I say it is uh, not fard. Second, he says that beauty is in the face. I do agree with him, but not 100%. Mm. 90%? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you statistics. Again, this is not the reason. Mm. You can't give your logic because face is most beautiful, therefore face should become. This is mm. our human logic. Allah's commandment is far superior to human logic. Because the most important part of face is the eyes. The eyes. Ah. And the eyes are seen. Eyes can be seen. Again, <laughs> it's defeat knowledge. Again, <laughs> Just to tell you, according to this scientific research, when a man looks at a woman, 68% they first look at the bosom. It's a recent research that came. 68%? Mm. 8% they initially look at the bosom, at the chest, not at the face. Subhanallah. Fine? So that's the reason Allah says in the Quran that covered the whale over the bosom. The mm. scientific research. Anyway, just because our logic says, I'm not saying that's the reason Naqab is not fard. The reason I give is based on the hadith. Of uh, Muhammad that when Muhammad said, it's a hadith of uh, Abu Dawood in the uh, uh, book of Salah, that when a lady becomes uh, reaches puberty and she offers Salah, her complete body should be covered except the face and the hand of the wrist. And the same word, the same word that is used for the whale in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31, is used in the hadith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same word. Jilbab, okay. uh, uh, you know? Yes. Uh, uh, khamar. Okay. No scholar today ever says that when you offer salah, your face should be covered. No scholar that I know of. It's, it's, it's right? not permissible to cover the face Sorry? of the salah. It is not permissible to cover Correct. the face of the salah. So again, <laughs> the same word which is in Arabic in the hadith of Abu Dawud, Sayyid Hadith Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is used in the Quran. So Surah Nur chapter 24, verse number 31, the word khimar does not mean covering the face. Okay. Again, going to Jilbab al-Hinna, it's a verse of uh, Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 55, yeah. that the Jilbab, when it says over, it can be done in various ways. Okay. It says okay. close to the body, not on the face. Yeah. So based Dr. on Zakir. this, I agree more with the <laughs> <laughs> argument. He told me he's a debate, <laughs> but the hadith is a weak hadith. It's okay. a hadith of, okay. uh, hadith of Asma. Of? 
Uh, whenever a woman grows uh, no, the uh, age of puberty. That has very safe Salbani. Sheikh Albani mm. has cast very we'll, safe. We'll verify okay. that. Inshallah. Uh, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. inshallah, we have a lot of time after the show. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're <laughs> out of time. Anyway, I'm oh. <laughs> very different <laughs> opinion. <laughs> 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 Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zakir, uh, for finding the time to be an Askoda. And of course, Sheikh Yusuf, it's always a pleasure having you on our program here on Huda TV. Dr. Mohammed Salah, it's always a pleasure to be with you here on Askoda. Um, just if you have any questions for any one of the sheikhs or, uh, or for Ask Huda, you can send us an email at ask at huda.tv. And don't forget, you can support us at support at huda.tv. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa if my love is attached to thee, then from sins I will be free. Each time my heart will be. Your name will resound with heat. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test.